shall not be moved. I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved on my way to glory land, and I shall not be moved on my way to glory land. like a tree planted by the water I shall not be Jesus is my Savior, and I will not be moved. Jesus is my Savior, and I will not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. be to God, I will not be moved. Glory be to God, now I will not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. No, I shall not be moved. Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. We're going to try to do this video outside. There might be some noise in the background, so we're gonna see how it goes. If not, I'll have to redo the video inside. But Hebrews, chap Hebrews chapter 11, verse five. Reread in your King James Bibles, in your King James Bibles, reread. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. So today we're, we're going to go over, we're going to go over, I was sent an email of a sister in Christ's testimony. And I'd like to read that testimony. And the reason it's so important is we just did a study on what true biblical repentance is as it applies to salvation. We'll go over a little bit of it again at the after this testimony, but to explain why people aren't getting saved today. And here's a testimony of what's opening people's eyes so they are getting saved today. And it's when they come to true biblical repentance. But I wanna get ahead of myself. So we have Sister in Christ testimony. I'd just like to read her letter to you. My journey to salvation and to being obedient to the word of God. My testimony on how the Lord Jesus Christ saved me, to God be all the glory. I want to stop there because, once again, you'll get attacked, Brother and Sister Christ, on what true biblical repentance is. Oh, it's a works. And so I, if it's a work, then why is she saying that Jesus Christ saved her? She didn't save herself. Jesus Christ saved her. So how do you do it? Through the true plan of salvation. Okay. The true plan of salvation, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. Let's continue. When I was 13, 
I'm 46 now. A traumatic event happened to me. One evening when I was out alone, I was raped by three lads aged about 16. I will not go into details, but this broke me. It break anyone. This broke me. I kept what happened to myself as I found it very difficult to manage emotionally. I started turning to alcohol. My dad was a drunkard, so finding alcohol was easy for me. Remember, she's 13 at the time. My mom and dad both worked. I felt that I could not turn to them as we were not a close family, as I was home alone a lot of the time. Due to the rape, I started to hate boys. Men, I saw them as dangerous. I did not like living at home for so for many years I had lived with my boyfriend I used him right really for a place to live she's using him for a place to live we were together for five years and when engaged for a year and at age 20 I was with child I was very happy about this as it was a chance to start a new life and settle down with a new baby I also stopped drinking too as I was a drunk every night and I found it hard to stop but with a baby, a new baby, on the way I, I knew that I had to. Now I want to pause here for a second. You remember the Bible where Paul talks about she'll be, she shall be saved in childbearing. There's something about being a mother and having children that saves a woman. It saves her from feminism. It saves her from this wicked world. In the sense that not like I'm not talking about eternal salvation, which we're going to get into. I'm just talking about temporary salvation. It, it helps keep her out of trouble. And this is the sister in Christ's testimony. Remember, she's not saved yet. But sadly, when I was five months with child, my boy, my boyfriend left me, so I became a single mom for ten years. And a few years after having my child and being a single mom. I started being a drunkard again and very depressed and suicidal. It came back. Why? Because we're going to get into this. She's missing something. She'll talk about that. I was raised an atheist at home and I never really thought about God, but in my brokenness and many tears, I prayed to God for the first time as I needed a miracle. God, if you are real, please help me. This is all I prayed. I did feel peaceful after I prayed and as the days went on, I had stopped drinking alcohol and even smoking too, but I was not saved according to the scriptures. I just found some of God's mercy. And that's there. I want to pause real quick. This is the woman's testimony. I've got testimonies where I talk about my lost life and there's a lot of times where I could have died as a, as a false convert um, and I could have gone to hell. But there was a lot of times in my lost life, God had showed grace. God had um, mercy for me to give me more opportunities to get saved time and time again. Let's continue on. I started to go to an Anglican church building. I was on the in, 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 I can't even say it's right. Evangelism team working in a church cafe. I even gave my testimony on TV on how going to church has helped me and a little about Jesus to on, a, to on a live broadcast. But I was not saved according to the scriptures. I was a fake. And I just want to say I can relate. I was a fake and fraud for so many years of my life. Remember? I got saved, I t supposedly got saved at uh, 12 years old. And my NIV, I wrote it in the back when I got water baptized. Water baptism is not for today. But water baptized, faith alone, did what they told me to, went to a local Babel building and everything, and did everything that the world told me to do. But like this sister in Christ, according to scripture, I wasn't saved either. I wasn't saved. I still look like the world, act like the world, doing things the world's way. Even if it's organized religion the world's way when it comes to organized religion. Okay, it's still not God's way. I didn't know God. I didn't know. I didn't have his word at the time. I was using Bible perversions. I didn't know God. The sister in Christ is saying, but I was not saved according to the scriptures. I was a fake. The gospel on the evangelicalism team was I, that I was preaching was come, was come to our church. And nothing really about sin, hell, Jesus, my sin was mentioned. So their gospel, they don't really mention sin that much, if at all. And hell, they didn't mention it at all. 
And Jesus, yeah, he was there. But I knew very little about Jesus and that he was God in the flesh. God the Father manifest in the flesh. I was still searching for God, though I went many I went many courses at church to find out how to be saved and who really Jesus is, but I never really got an answer. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'm not trying to interrupt this Sister of Christ's testimony, because in the Babel buildings, this isn't the final authority. Even the ones that claim to be King James Bible-believing Babel buildings, this is not their final authority. Traditions of men get in the way. Philosophy gets in the way. Rudiments of the world get in the way. Right? She was never told the truth. But I really, but I really, but I never really got any answers. See, I was still searching for God, though I went many courses at church to find out how to be saved and who really Jesus is, but I never really got any answers. So I went back to my sinful life again, drinking, smoking, hating men, and I started really hating God. I despised Him. Now, stop right there for a second, Brothers Christ, the sister's testimony. Have you noticed that in the battle building system, when I was growing up in the battle building system, we had a lot of people come and go, come and go, come and go, and it was like, you know, this might be something I'd like to try, or I've been lied to, and when they realize that they've been lied to, and they don't have the truth, they end up going, they were already, you know, they go back to looking like the world, talking like the world, acting like the world. It's like the old man was never dead and buried, or in this case, the old woman was never dead and buried with Christ. She says here, uh, my heart was so wicked and evil, and, my, and by the mercy of God, he let me go through some more tri trials to break me, so I would surrender. Bible says, God is nigh unto them that have a broken heart, and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. And we went through that study on repentance and how a broken heart. God will let you keep going and keep going, and he's doing everything he can to, to break your heart. To break your heart. So you can come broken and be ready for salvation. Due to my hatred of men, myself, God the world, I was now also, um, suffering from reoccurring thoughts of the rape. I became very depressed and suicidal. Many times my husband will come home to find that I had taken an overdose or self-harmed or drunk. So this time she's married. But knows that she hates everything. She basically just hates everything. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no hope. Remember what the Bible says? With, uh, and Peter, be ready to give a, answer the hope that is in you. There's not that hope. And the, uh, Jesus talks about the peace that I give you. Not as the world giveth you. Look how the world gives. Their, this is the world's peace. I'll be honest with you. This is the world's peace. Due to my hatred of men, myself, God, the world, I was now suffering from reoccurring thoughts of rape but her like past mistakes and past trauma that you've been through this is the peace that the world promises you but it's not real peace and remember she went through the battle building system she went through the faith alone easy believism where they don't talk about sin as much and hell as much let's keep going here I was in and out of mental health hospitals and with over 20 failed suicide attempts, I started to believe that God was protecting me and that he would not let me die no matter how many times I would try and take my own life. I thank God that my husband still stayed with me and he did help me, but without Jesus, my depression always came back. She had the head knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say this real quick. The first time I read this, I know this sister in Christ. I fellowship with this sister in Christ once a week. We do Bible studies and go over the Bible and everything. I didn't know this about her. I couldn't see this. All I saw was a woman that just had the peace of God and the joy of the Lord and his love of the Word and, and his love, you know, for Jesus Christ. And I saw a Bible-believing, God-fearing woman who loved the Lord that changed life. I didn't know how dramatic her life changed. If you look at the woman today, you couldn't tell this. Just talking with the woman today, you couldn't tell this. Helicopters don't go. <laughs> when you're outside, you're 
gonna run into some noises every once in a while. But I feel important to point out that I didn't know this. I, I believe there's a changed life. There's always a changed life. But you look at the woman today, you couldn't tell she went through this stuff. You went through this? And after God saves you, there's a changed life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're not the same person you once were. Look at the person she's outlining who she was before she got truly saved and born again. She was part of the Babel building system, organized religion, false gospel of easy believism. But she didn't know who Jesus Christ really was. She didn't know God. Because the God of these Babel buildings, the lowercase g God of this world posing as a anti an antichrist, posing as a Jesus Christ of the easy believism gospel, you'll never know who God is. You'll never get truly saved. What's missing from the easy, we call it easy believism gospel, but what's missing from it? They take out repentance, true biblical repentance. One of the hardest things I had to do was to, to let go of my anger and hatred towards Jesus and to learn to trust in Him even though He is a male. I had to learn to trust God. That's right. I know it's for some of these worldly, worldly uh, false religion and everything. Oh, Jesus is gender, or God is just gender neutral and everything. No, God is a man and that man is Jesus Christ. One day I knew that I needed to stop taking the anxiety and depression medication from the doctors and trust in God alone. It worked, praise God, my evil thoughts reduced in depression to also no more suicide attempts, praise God, but still I was not saved. These are all works. These are things she was doing before she got saved. And yes, I'm, I'm not saying I'm. she's one that can testify, and there's other brethren out there that can testify with a lot more credentials than I do, but a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs, especially when it comes to the depression drugs and everything, they make people worse. Why do they still give them out? The love of money. But you get off that stuff, you'll, you'll feel better. <laughs> but remember, but I was still not saved. I did not have a change of heart that much, and I was still enjoying my sin of drinking too much, and I was a bad mother too. In 2020, I realized that we might be in the end times as the world felt very strange. I knew a bit about the mark of the beast and what would happen to me if I had to sort myself out to stop messing around from being... I see. I knew a bit about the mark of the beast and what would happen to me. I had to sort myself out to stop messing around from being a Christian in public, but then wicked in my heart and life. Amen. What I mean by that is I'm saying amen. I can, can attribute to this. When I was a false convert, I went to the Bible buildings. I put on the nice suit and tie. I was in the worship team. I played the bass guitar on the worship team. I taught Sunday school for the grade school kids. I, when I got old enough, like college age, I was helping out in, in the uh, high school. Okay? I even went to Bible college. Okay? I did a year of Bible college. Okay? When you're in front of other people, you tend to try to behave yourself more. This will be a whole nother, maybe some later on we'll do a Bible study on it where it seems like when people are around, you're, you're more likely to do what's right than by yourself. The hardest time to do what's right, the hardest time to be true to God and what's right and that which is holy is when you're by yourself, when you don't think nobody's watching. But the one thing we always forget is who is always watching, brother, sis, Christ? God is. God is always watching. But our flesh tries to deceive ourselves. If nobody's watching, we can live however we want to live. And that's what she's trying to make the point, is saying when, when I wasn't in front of like the Babel building, and in front, I was living a wicked life. It comes down to the heart. Eventually it's going to reflect and you're going to see it physically. But you can put, a show, you put on a show for a while. Men behind the camera on, on, on video platforms can always put, a show, put on a show in front of the camera. But what's their heart? She's letting us know her heart was still wicked, very worldly, very wicked. I knew that I needed God's help or I would go to hell very soon. I saw some Christians on TV that I watched and they seemed to have peace and talked about Jesus with love and care and loved the Word of God too. Now remember, this is TV. It's the same thing. It's a video platform. Anybody can put on a show behind a video platform. 
the Lord revealed to me that I had a different Jesus and not the Jesus of the Bible. Same with me. Same with a lot of the brethren. I've, I've listened to a lot of brothers' testimonies that truly got saved and born again, coming out of the Bible building system, coming out of organized religion. They didn't have the right Jesus. I didn't have the right Jesus. She's saying she didn't have the right Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the King James Bible. Not the counterfeit Antichrist Jesus of the Bible perversions, but the true Jesus Christ that can only be found in the King James Bible. So I started to get into the Word into the Word of God to find out more. Over the next few years, listening to KJV Bible teachers, I was led astray with different Gospels. Imagine that. You mean someone can sit there and claim to be a King James Bible believer and preach a false Gospel? Yeah. See it a lot. You have people like with the Mormons, they, use, they, they pretend to use this and deceive people, getting them in with this, but get them over to a work-based salvation where you have to earn salvation. You've got to earn, you gotta be, you got to merit salvation like the Catholic Church. But they claim to use this, but they're not. Then you have other King James Bible believers that have preached this easy believism where there's no repentance. Some even teach there's no prayer. You don't even ask God to save you. You just have this knowledge of Jesus, of a Jesus Christ. They don't have the real Jesus Christ down here, but they have the knowledge of a Jesus Christ. They know the story of what Jesus Christ went through, and they think they can just take salvation. They can steal it. They can be a thief. They don't have to ask for it. So just because, and she's testifying, to all the brothers and sisters there, I've said this, now the sister in Christ is saying from her own experience, just because someone holds a King James Bible and claims to be a King James Bible believer doesn't mean that they are. And doesn't mean that they're preaching the true plan of salvation. I was led astray with different gospels like only faith in the blood, only believe. I could quote scripture and defend these false gospels. Because there are scriptures that talk about belief, but the Bible says you're supposed to compare scripture with scripture with scripture. And we're going to get into that before we wrap this up, where Paul explains the whole gospel, and people don't like those verses, when he explains the whole plan of salvation, how does one get saved today? They don't like those verses. They'll ignore those verses, and they'll go to the verses that talk about faith. What we just read there, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Where does it talk about repentance? Where does it talk about prayer? Where does it even talk about salvation? It's just talking about having faith in God. you got to seek Him, and He will tell you how to get saved. Okay, But you have to have faith in Him and His perfect written word. I could quote scriptures, defend the false gospels, but I felt always that something, always that something was missing. I still had the problem of my rebellious heart, not submitting to Jesus in the cross, trusting Him, asking for salvation. I learned about having godly sorrow. If you've, if you've lasted this long in this video, she's learned about God, someone taught, him, taught her godly sorrow and having sorrow towards God. And she says through some of, um, through some of your teachings, Brother Philip, I'm not the only one that teaches the proof plan of salvation. There's other brethren out there that are also teaching true biblical repentance as it applies to salvation. How to find God's grace and godly sorrow. That Jesus alone paid the price for my sins. It was no longer up here. When she learned what true biblical repentance was. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of. But the sorrows of the world worketh death. When you, hold, uh, when you regard iniquity in your heart. Remember King David in the Psalms. If you regard iniquity in your heart. God will not hear your prayers. God will not hear you. When you, you can't come to the cross with the knowledge and just regard iniquity in your heart saying, I love my sin, I have no problem with my sin, I, love, I'm, I, I just, I'm going to keep my sin, I have no problem with how I'm living. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I might be going to hell for it, but you know what, I don't care, I love how I live. But someone said, if I just say I believe in the big guy upstairs, I can get a free pass to heaven. It doesn't work that way. Yet a lot of the easy believers in Bible buildings have deceived people into thinking that it works that way. You just believe in the big guy upstairs and continue living however you want to live. Which was your intentions before you came to say, I believe in the big guy upstairs. I still want to live that sinful, wicked life is what you're saying. 
And I've come across a lot of these easy believism. That's their whole attitude. They still want to live their sinful, wicked life after salvation. They never came to the cross broken. This sister in Christ is talking about how, how the bad things that happened to her, how she was scarred, how the world is trying to turn her from Jesus Christ. You know, the Peter Ruckman's, uh, some of you might know who Peter Ruckman is, but Peter Ruckman's a preacher. He has a teaching, Five Surprises in Hell. And one of the things is, is the roadblocks that God will set to prevent people from going to, to hell. And you've got to fight like mad to go to hell. Uh, I, I, I agree with him a little bit. But the part I disagree with him on is he took a lot of those roadblocks that he claimed that are roadblocks to, to prevent you from going to hell. No, some of those roadblocks are what leads to people to hell because Satan counterfeits Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is God, and he is, and he puts out roadblocks to prevent people from going to hell, guess what Satan does? He puts out roadblocks to prevent people from going to heaven. And in the end, no matter what Satan does, and I know this might sound bad, but please hear me out, no matter what Jesus does, when, when I'm, we're talking about the roadblocks, in the context of the roadblocks, it still comes down to the individual person. If you go to heaven, it's because you came to God broken, Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Ask, uh, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. God will save you. If you reject that and you refuse to repent, I ain't repentant. I'm just going to have belief. You're going to go to hell and it's going to be your fault. If you come to God broken and give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross, then it's going to be God that saves you. But you see what I'm saying? They, are, they both put out roadblocks. Satan's a counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Satan, Satan is the lowercase g God of this world. There was a lot of roadblocks put out there by God trying to prevent her from going to hell and by Satan trying to keep her from getting saved and, and see her go to hell, keep her from going to heaven. The enemy is, that's why the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You have some people I tried preaching to and they start thinking, well, yeah, maybe repentance is, and then the world comes and gets their hooks in them and they turn around and say, no, that's just heresy. I'm going to go back to living the way I want with easy believism and just live like the devil, like the world, look like the world, talk like the world, act like, because the world got its hooks in back into them and pulled them back down and talked them out of true biblical repentance as it applies to salvation. The sister in Christ, she's saying, I've learned about having godly sorrow and having sorrow towards God. Sorrow, remember, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Repentance has to come before, salva before God will save you. What makes repentance works as it applies to salvation? Godly sorrow. Sorrow towards God. For what? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death you're under the law of sin and death and your sin is what's causing you to go to hell and you deserve to go to hell for sinning against god there has to be sorrow there for that sin she was never taught this but if you keep seeking the lord what we just read about there you know to them that diligently seek him Without faith it is impossible to please, and for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. She was diligently seeking him. And she was running into roadblocks that Satan put out. Roadblocks here, the battle building system, easy believism, false gospel, television with the false gospels and, and, and false religion of that. Then she started getting online, so she started learning about all these people, just because they claim to be a King James Bible believer, doesn't mean they are one. Satan likes to counterfeit everything that's godly and true. She came to the true scriptures. Someone, I, I, I already read about me. She came to one of my videos about repentance, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. She, God could have brought her to anybody. Uh, it's not me alone. If something happens to me, brother, says Christ, God will raise somebody else up. Okay? And that's, that's why I'm saying God gets all the glory. I am grateful to be used by God. And brothers and sisters Christ, people are still getting saved in this late hour. They're coming to the knowledge of the truth of true biblical repentance and what they were lied to their whole life. And they become broken. How to find God's grace and godly sorrow, through godly sorrow. 
that Jesus alone paid the price for my sins. It was then that I called upon the Lord Jesus to save me with real sorrow for all my rebellious sinful behavior and that he died for me for all that rebellious sinful behavior. That's why Jesus died for her and rose again. Notice she's not saying you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners and Jesus died for all sinners. No, it's personal. She comes to the cross broken and says, He died for my sin with real sorrow for all my rebellious sinful behavior and that He died for me. Why? Because of my sinful rebellious behavior. At this point, I was finally saved. She got that assurance of salvation. And like I said, when I met her and we started doing some Bible studies and everything and start talking about the Word of God, I, I heard, uh, you know, she's saved. She told me that she was saved through the true plan of salvation that we're just reading, we're, that we're talking about. Repentance finally came into it. True biblical repentance. Not going from unbelief to belief. You know, not a change of mind. She had a change of heart. And that change was going from loving her uh, rebellious and sinful behavior and, and holding like regarding it in her heart to hating it to now having sorrow towards God because of it that's the change of heart from loving it to having sorrow for, for it say Lord you go from loving it to hating it and then you have sorrow for it say Lord I'm sorry I never should have done it I'm so sorry Lord I did I can't take it away I, I can't take it I did it but I'm sorry I ever did it then, you, then that belief, that head knowledge, comes down to there and becomes real faith. What the Bible calls faith. That's why we, I always push this brother, sister Christ, and this sister in Christ learn and have through her testimony. It takes true biblical repentance for that belief to become faith down here in the heart. Not just be head knowledge, but to be true faith. A lot of people have the head knowledge and they've been deceived into calling it faith when it's just head knowledge. You're still in the world, of the world, and you're still on your way to hell. You're still on your way to hell. What was the difference for her? She had the knowledge. She did the Babel building scene, all the, the organized religion scene. She knew a little bit about the Bible. But what was, she, what was withheld from her? What true biblical repentance is as it applies to salvation. That's why in these last days, brothers and Christ, I mean it. We need to speak with authority and say this is where our authority lies, the Word of God. This is the final authority. And that's how we have to live. That's how we have to speak. Thus saith the Lord. we got to speak like this. This is authority. And secondly, what's going to lead people to Christ is you really got to push what true biblical repentance is. Because people have been lied to. They've been deceived. Oh, there is no repentance. That's works. Then when you can't hide the fact that it's not work, because the Bible says repent and turn, turn is the works. You, it's not works and works. It's repent, which happens in the heart, and then turn. After you have sorrow in your heart towards God and you're asking God to forgive you, then you turn from the wickedness. This is Old Testament. Then you turn from the wickedness. Now today, as a, in the life of a Christian, we still have that same attitude. Repent and turn from our wickedness as a saved sinner. When I fail the Lord, I repent, I turn from that wickedness, and I get my heart right with the Lord, and I get back to walking with the Lord. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's what Jesus was saying. All right. At this point, I was finally saved. I was rebellious for many years and running away from God in my heart. And that I would try to ignore try to ignore him for many years by enjoying my sin and also to try to use sin to block out my pain that I had from when I was raped. The more I rebelled, the more that the Lord would allow me to suffer until I would finally turn to him fully. You don't follow the true plan of salvation, you can never turn to God. Not even fully. But you can't turn to God. Okay. 
And we've talked about this, that remember this is just mainly us reading a testimony, but we've done studies showing that it's always about the heart. It's a heart matter. Salvation is a heart matter, not a head issue. It's a heart issue. It's talking about the heart, the heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's a heart issue. It's always a heart issue. People have the knowledge of the scriptures. They have God's word, I, you know, in their head. But it's not a head issue. Salvation will never be a head issue. It's always a heart issue. And there's, Bre there's King James, professing King James Bible believer, godly men, supposed to be great men of God, that have mocked this and said, did you believe in your head or did you believe in your heart? And they mock it because it is important. This is where you get saved. This is where you get deceived. This is where salvation takes place that leads you to heaven. This is what's only going to leave you to hell when you just have the head knowledge. And it always comes down to, did you repent and believe? No, no, I just believe. Repentance is a work. You're on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell. And there's no, it's no surprise that all these easy believers and people, there's no changed life. And please understand when I say no changed life, I'm talking about in the heart that reflects the life that you live. Because anybody can try to quit, quit smoking. There's lost people who flat out reject Jesus Christ that will quit smoking. They end up replacing it with another bad addiction. But oftentimes they quit smoking not because, hey, this is bad and this is rotten, i got to quit. No, there's a factor in there that there's something that they want more than the smoking. Let's say alcohol. Let's switch over to alcohol real quick. Drunkenness. It's going to destroy your marriage. Do you want your husband or do you want your wife? Or do you want to lose your wife and your husband and keep the drinking? There's lost people that will give up drinking so they can keep their wife. In other words, they're going to lose something. Their health is failing. I know lost family members that they only quit drinking because their health. The doctor said, if you keep drinking, you're going to die. So they quit drinking. Does that mean you know they had a change of heart? No. It's because something hit them that they wanted something else more than they wanted that sin. They don't want to die. They want to live more than they want to die. You know, <laughs> they, 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 sometimes people, lost people will give it up for family. But the point is, is the heart change, the changed life, the heart is, I gave up alcohol for the Lord. He said it's wrong. I'm just pleasing the Lord. It's not about the consequences. Yeah, it's destroying my body. Yeah, it's hurting my relationship with people. But the number one reason I gave it up is because it offends God. God said it's a sin. It is wrong. I'm quitting it for the Lord. That's the changed life. That's where the changed life comes in, brother says Christ. The changed heart. The new creature in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Start this all over real quick. I was rebellious for many years and running away from God in my heart, and that I would try to ignore Him for many years by enjoying my sin and also trying to use sin to block out the pain that I had from when I was raped. The more I rebelled, the more that the Lord God would allow me to suffer until I would finally turn to Him fully. God will let you go. Okay. God will put a lot of roadblocks to prevent someone from going to hell. He, when someone wants the truth, God will show you the truth. And believe it or not, I believe that even those who just don't want the truth, there's going to be at least two times in their life that when they go to stand before for us that are saved, we know about the great white throne judgment. When you have a lost person standing at the great white throne to be judged by Jesus Christ, they're going to stand there. And I, I bet you at least, I don't want to bet because the betting's wrong. I believe at least twice in their life, the Bible says before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. At least twice in their life, God brought the truth to them and they rejected it. They rejected it. Now, I, I remember going head to head with a lot of these false converts, easy believers and converts, and I told them the true plan of salvation and they rejected it. Someone else came along and told them. Tons of brethren come along and tell them the true plan of salvation and they reject it. They're without excuse. But if you're truly seeking the truth and you come to God saying, Lord, I want your truth, not man's truth, not the world's truth, not the world's way. Lord, I want you. Something's wrong with me. And that's when you find out you're a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on your way to hell. And you deserve to go to hell for sinning against God. And there has to be sorrow in your heart for this condition. Sorrow in your heart towards God for sinning against Him. 
And then you come to God and say, Lord, I deserve to go to hell, but I don't want to go to hell. Is there no way to go to heaven? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. With the heart, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You re for God is sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Repent towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. How do I know that I am saved now? My hatred towards men has gone away, and I am willing to submit to my husband and put God first. The changed life after salvation. I am willing to suffer for Jesus, and he gives me strength and peace through life's problems. Praise God that he has worked on my heart to bring such healing. In my heart, I know that I am saved, and I finally have peace. Now the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You can know, and she finally knows, beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know that I am saved, and I finally have peace about this too. Real peace. The peace that only God can give. You know, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And he, Jesus talks about the peace that I give you, not as the world giveth you, but as I give you. The only real peace that can come from true biblical salvation. Not the fake peace that people put on a show, but real peace. She's found it. I finally have peace about this, too, and that I have finally submitted myself to God and His plan for salvation all according to the scriptures. Remember I said these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life? I left out the last part. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's because we have a perfect written record. It's only through faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is how people get saved. When someone like me or another brother in Christ out there or a sister in Christ witnesses to somebody through this we're preaching the true plan of salvation found in the King James Bible. This sister in Christ, what put it all together for her? What brought it all together for her? When she found out what true biblical repentance was. Having sorrow in your heart for your sins against God. Okay. I want to read some things in the scriptures. Uh, Luke 14. Luke 14. Oh uh, no, 15. Luke 15 verse 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. See, they try to say repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. That no just person, he's saying I'm perfect, I haven't sinned. I don't have to have sorrow for my, my sins. This has nothing to do with faith as far as belief. This has to do with over one sinner that repenteth. I'm sorry, Lord, for sinning against you. I was wrong. Versus over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Oh, no, repentance is just going from unbelief. Oh, no, repentance is just works-based salvation. Oh, we don't repent to get saved. Or 99 just men who need no repentance. Those people are going to hell. If they don't become broken someday, they're going to wind up in hell. If they don't repent. Jump down to verse 10. It says, Likewise, I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels over, of God over one sinner that repenteth. Over one sinner that repenteth. Sin is involved when it comes to repenting. Now here's one of the biggest things. Turn to Acts chapter 20. We like reading this a lot because this is what really shuts them down and they can't do anything about this except ignore the scriptures. I've said this time and time again, brothers and Christ, when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to major doctrine, we say major, but just doctrine in the Bible. Doctrines that are for today are teachings like eternal security, uh, being sealed into the day of redemption. Okay? Having eternal security. Once God saves you, you're sealed until the day. Nobody can take it away. That's a, that's a doctrine for today. We're only sealed today as far as the body of Christ as a whole. Those who get saved. Um, and you go through these different doctrines. Uh, the Godhead doctrine. Um, the, 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 the time of Jacob's... Uh, was it the day of Christ? 
the day of redemption, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ doctrine. If all they're allowed to do is quote what the scriptures actually say and they have to compare scripture with scripture, you'd hardly have much error. The reason we have tons of errors, people decide to grab and cherry pick what they want and throw out the rest. And oftentimes, half of their, when they cherry pick, they grab some stuff from here, but half of what they're saying is just man's words, philosophy, rudiments of the world. Brother says Christ, I said this again, faith alone, chapter and verse where it says faith alone. Faith alone actually goes against the scriptures. We're going to read that here. Acts 20, verse 20. Let's go back up to 19. Serving, this is Paul, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me in the lying weight of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable to, unto you. He's talking about Asia. If you go back far enough, far enough he's talking about where he's, I came into Asia, verse 18. It was profitable unto you. He held back nothing. But have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. What's he testifying? The gospel of salvation, the plan of salvation, how you get saved today. And what does he say? Repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice water baptism isn't here. Whole another study we'll get into eventually. But repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's not faith alone. It's never been faith alone. It'll never be faith alone. You have to repent and believe. You have to repent and have faith in Jesus Christ. Notice he starts it with repentance towards God and faith. Why is that? Because if you skip repentance towards God, you'll never get saved. The roadblocks were put here, and she finally got saved because God removes some of the roadblocks that Satan was doing and showed her the truth about true biblical repentance. And she got saved and born again. That changed life. I, I'll say this again. I was amazed by her testimony. I, that's not the woman I talked to. I was like, you're not the same person. That's I, the, At the beginning when she's talking about everything she's talking about, hating men and, and evil and, and rebellious and, and drunkenness and this and suicidal... I was like, that's not the woman I talked to on, on Skype, video chat. That's not the woman I talked to. What happened? God saved that woman and gave her a new life. Why? She found true biblical repentance as it applies to salvation. Repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. To testify the gospel, the grace of God. How that Christ died for our sins. Ours there are saved sinners. So it's individual, not the world, but the individual comes to the cross and goes, He died for my sins. How He died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't re truly biblically repented to where you had that, ch that change of heart, where you end up giving your life to Jesus Christ at the cross, the old man and the old woman is given to Jesus Christ at the cross. When you repent and come to the cross in repentance, you're giving your, the old man to the Lord saying, I don't want this man anymore. This man's on his way to hell and he deserves to go to hell for sinning against you. Lord, I believe in the finished work of, of Jesus Christ on the cross, that it was God's blood, your blood that was shed on the cross, and your blood can wash my sins away. You confess both, and then you say, Lord, save me. Please save me. Lord, I don't deserve it. Lord, please, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please save me. Lord, I need to be saved. People don't really come to that. Why? Repentance has been stolen from them. True biblical repentance as it applies to salvation is being stolen from you. But if you love the Lord and to the point of wanting to seek Him and say, Lord, I need the truth. How do I truly get saved? He'll show you. He showed me. He showed this sister in Christ. So I want to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And for those that are lost... It's not too late. It's not too late. You're still breathing. We're still here. 
body of Christ hasn't left. We're still here. You're still breathing. It's not too late to truly get saved and born again. I'll see you in the next study.